see we have uh, looks like we have Mark in Canada so hi Mark hi how's it going uh, Jen yes how are you today good um, yeah as you know my name is Mark um, I'm an admitted Christian creationist believe in a higher being that created everything so I'm calling today because I have a question for atheists about the fundamental beliefs now, from what I've read and understand, you guys believe that anything that cannot be proved through observation of the traditional five senses, sight, hearing, the uh, touch, sound, smell, and uh, taste, if you can't observe it through the five senses, then it's not real and it doesn't exist, correct? Where did you get that? This is what I've read about uh, atheist philosophy and what I've heard of it's, a number of atheists. That, that's not an atheist speak. philosophy. Yeah, I think first of all you should understand that atheist atheist just means you don't believe in God. Period. It doesn't say No, 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 no. I know, but how do you determine if something is scientifically real or if it's just imagined? If you like how do you determine if it exists or not? Like that's what I'm saying. I read that how science determines if something exists or not is by the five traditional senses of sight, touch, smell, we have sound and we have many more ways besides human senses to determine if things are real or not. Okay, but yeah, yeah. Do you believe that that humans only have five senses to determine, like, perceive things? Why is that even relevant? Uh, wh I mean, where, where are you going with this? What what question do you really want to ask? Well, that is the logical fallacy that I find with atheism, because you believe in evolution, yet you don't believe that we could develop more than five senses of perception to perceive a reality. Well, I think that if you, if you actually understand what science does, we've actually extended our ability to perceive things by using yeah, instruments that... Yeah, intellectually, that I understand that. Okay. But I'm, you understand that I'm we can detect about, things that humans can't perceive with five senses, right? Yeah, using technological devices. Right. right. So you really you're asking a question about the scientific net method, not about atheism. Is that correct? Yeah, well, I'm asking about the scientific method, but I'm asking about atheism because atheism believes and follows what they follow because they follow whatever science has proven to be fact and anything else. Either no, that, that's not what atheism... Either. Atheism doesn't believe anything. Atheism is a response to a specific claim. Well, so that's what I mean. You... you don't step out of what is the known. You make all of your decisions about your life based on what is known fact. No. No? No, we're not claiming knowledge about whether or not a God exists. What we're saying is that we don't believe that a God exists because no one's been able to demonstrate to our satisfaction that such a thing exists. If you, you, if you could provide evidence that doesn't rely on five senses, I'm not sure what that would look like, but... Uh, basically we don't believe something for which there is no evidence so if you came up with some evidence uh, that would that would satisfy that question uh, that was not related to the five senses then we'd be glad to hear it okay well that's good because uh, do you agree that one of the twelve consistent one of the twelve uh, constants in our universe is uh, electrical magnetic fields Um, again, I have no idea where this is going, but okay, for the sake of argument, let's agree to that. Where are you going with that? Yeah, we do live, we, we basically live on a supergiant magnet floating through space orbiting the sun, right? Um, okay. And and we're, we're, we're not cosmologists either, so. Yeah, your point would be? And we're all basically walking electrical magnetic field, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, where, where are you going with this? Are you a cosmologist? I'm going with this. I'm going with this that maybe the reason that you have not ever, ever been able to perceive the existence of God is because it requires a sixth sense development. Or maybe maybe your God doesn't exist. Um. Then I know I know citing names is not enough to be to, to be proof. But hey, there's some really amazing people from history who did believe in God. Isaac Newton, Thomas Edison, yeah, Armstrong. Yeah, it's possible to be really intelligent and still believe in a God. 
and uh, Abraham Lincoln. Do you know he abolished slavery uh, in U.S. Uh, eight, again, eight again, documents? it's possible to be really intelligent and still be wrong about that issue. It doesn't mean they're believing God. I know, God but he used the God argument to abolish slavery. Well, they used the God argument to justify slavery yeah. for years, too, so I don't think that's all that relevant. I think scientists can believe in God and not believe in God for scientific reasons. Would you agree with that? Sure. So, okay. so, so you, claim, you claim to have a sixth sense for perceiving God. So what is that, what is that like? How, how is it that you perceive God, and what is this, how does this sense manifest? What manifest? is the sixth sense? Well, I already gave you a hint. We live on a supergiant electrical magnet, and we are all electrical magnetic fields. All life forms are emitting electrical magnetic fields. So I don't know, is it not logical to assume that that sixth sense would be the ability to detect electrical magnetic fields? And so you think that we're atheists because we don't have the ability to detect electromagnetic fields? I'm saying that that is the very essence and sense of how you detect and sense the presence of God. It is a presence. Electromagnetic field is a presence. It's not something you can see, feel, hear, or touch, or smell, or taste, so, but it is a presence. Okay, but we have, uh, we have um, you know, detectors that can actually detect electromagnetic fields. You, yes, so, actually, yeah, you do, and I'm glad you mentioned that. Have you ever seen the show Paranormal Witness where they take... <laughs> Uh, electrical de detection devices into so-called places where there's been spiritual activity and things are going off the gauge and they're like, we can't say exactly what happened here. All we know is there's stuff that's tripping our equipment. And, you know, when you come up with something that you can't say exactly what's happening there, the correct answer is, I don't know what's going there's on. There's a presence that's tripping it's, their equipment. Well, no, it's not to make the assertion that there's some presence there that's making their equipment go crazy. What's um, making their equipment go crazy then? Well, we don't know. But, but you know, claiming that it must be a god is not justified. And you do know that those shows are nonsense, right? That stuff is all scripted and... Yeah, okay. some of them are, but, you know, so I, I've seen some yeah. real factual ones where they do act as well, real... How do you tell the like, ones that are scripted from the factual and, ones? And expose the hoax of it, not make a hoax out of it. Okay, so, so how, do you, how, do, how do you tell which ones are scripted and which ones are factual? I'm just curious about what your method is. I don't, but I'm just saying that I see that on both sides, the ones that try to make a hoax and the ones that try to discredit and debunk the hoax even come back and say, hey, we can't explain this, but there's stuff tripping our equipment. And what stuff is that? They don't know. They can't explain. Exactly. They, they don't know. So, so what's the basis for claiming that it's something supernatural? Well, what's the basis for not? Because it's you don't be know. Something. But it's got to be something. If you make a positive claim, you need evidence to back that up. I'm not, make, I'm not making a positive factual claim. I'm just saying, hey. No, you're, free you're actually, you actually person, are. You're saying that there's something supernatural that's causing this electromagnetic thing. No, 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 no. I'm saying as a free will thinking person, I am choosing to believe in a free thinking society, freeing my mind to believe what I want to believe about that event and phenomenon. Okay, and you, I you know that. To attach a supernatural, you know that belief I is not a choice, right? You actually don't choose your beliefs. You're either, How do you figure that? You're either convinced or you're not. So something has convinced you that this is a supernatural event. So what is that? Whatever I observed. Okay, so, so seeing a TV show that you admitted there, there are lots of, of hoaxes going on on these TV shows. No, that was, just an, that was just an example because you used, you were saying about we have equipment to detect electrical magnetic fields and other right. things like that. And I was just using that as an example to show you that there have been people using these electrical magnetic detection devices and detected presences of electromagnetic fields from sources they couldn't identify or verify. How do you get from that to God, though? Because I yeah, haven't I seen a show called God Hunters where they, you know, yeah. The presence of God was tripping their equipment. So, so when you when you have a the sense that tells you that there's a God, what does that look like to you, or what you know what measurements does that do you? Okay, hold on, let, let, hold on a second. Let, let me just jump here for a second. I'll, I'll come back to that. But just I want to ask you a question. You believe in the the 
the court of law and how the court of law operates in your country and in the world, right? In, in free, in first world free thinking countries, right? I'm not sure what you mean by believe in. I, um, uh, yeah, we have a court system and it, and it and works most of the time. It, yeah, it works pretty well, well but it has it. flaws. You think that is a... You, you, <laughs> Man, okay, so what I'm saying by that, in the court of law, in all free world, first world countries, three witnesses are considered to be enough substantiating three witnesses that have that witness the same thing are considered enough substantiating evidence to be considered fact. No. That that's news to me. I've never heard that before. No, in that's US not a that's not a system. criteria for anything in a court. I, there well, can be one witness if there's enough evidence or right. there can be if it, 900. Yeah. If three witnesses testify to seeing the same thing, but there's other evidence that refutes that, that testimony, then those three witnesses, th that testimony has no value. Okay. Fine. But the, the point I was, where I was going, trying to go with that is you, you, I'm, I'm assuming you all have heard of the AA 12-step programs in, in the USA, North America, and across the world. Boy, this is like a gish gallop of topics here. But yes, we've heard of that. Okay. So... Are you aware that there are millions and millions of people worldwide who claim that going to the 12-step program and coming to know a higher power creative being helped change their lives and are no longer addicted to drugs and alcohol? I, I, agree, that, I agree that there are people that claim that, yes. Yeah, and are you also aware, because I'm one of those people, that's how I came to Christ. I grew up in an atheist family, and I was a non-believer, and I didn't see any substantiating proof to convince me that there's a real God. But I was at my bottom, and I tried everything in my life. I tried everything. I went to therapists, doctors, everything. And the only thing that was left was, hey, you know what? Why not give it a try? What do I got to lose? Okay. So I opened the door and said, okay. And guess what? As soon as I opened the door to God, as soon as I started to pray, as soon as I started to open my heart to it, I was changed. And I don't have a drinking and drug problem anymore. Well, and that's the same thing that millions well, of the people across the world who participate in these programs will say. I congratulate you on your sobriety, but mm -hmm. my question would still be, how do you know there's a God and, and that's what made you sober? Yeah, because from where I sit, it looks like you did all the hard work. You actually are responsible for your sobriety. And you should give yourself more credit. Yeah, you did. Uh, I, I do give myself credit. And you asked me if I called them before. Um, yeah, I called them before. I called in... And, and, you said, and you guys said the same thing to me when I called in a few years ago. So you know what? Just to be completely scientific about it, see, God doesn't force himself on anybody. If you ask him to leave, he'll leave. And it's kind of like this. Imagine well, you're I, I think your God people. doesn't exist, so I agree he doesn't force himself on anybody. Okay, so you know I believe in God, so just entertain my thoughts. You're trying, you're trying to understand why, so I'm telling you. Okay. So imagine you have digital cable, right? Imagine you have di digital cable, right? Okay. I have and it, so... Not much of an imagination. And you decide that, hey, I can't afford digital cable anymore, so I need to call the cable company and downgrade to, to analog cable, basic cable. Not an option anymore, but yeah, okay. <laughs> sure. I, it's, it's just a metaphor. Yeah, go ahead. I understand. <laughs> so that's what I did a few years ago when you guys said that to me, right? And I'm like, okay, let's see if the, I did this by myself, if there's some supernatural being helping me. So I'm going to kick that out of my life. And sure enough, I did that, so that's why I gave that analogy. If I had digital cable, and it was like downgrading to, to uh, analog cable. You know, because I can't afford to pay the tax, to pay the extra money to have digital cable. I can't afford the emotional tax of having a supernatural being that I may not know really exists because, hey, people are convincing me that maybe it doesn't, now it's real. And guess what? It's nothing to do with me because I did keep trying my hardest. I did keep, did keep doing everything that I was doing before and going and doing all the things that he was doing my life started to fall apart. What do you mean by you kicked him out? Did you stop believing? Yeah. I, I find it hard that yeah, anyone I, could just turn it on or off like that at will. Yeah, yeah. I did. I said, okay, I'm not going to go to church anymore. I'm not going to read my Bible anymore. I'm not going to pray anymore. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reboot my mind and become completely scientific mind where I believed we evolved from monkeys and apes and, hey, there's there's you know nothing what, to all I, I, this. Mark, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you here because I, I, actually I think you're being dishonest. Okay, because I'm not. What, you're, I'm what not. you're describing is not possible. You cannot reboot your mind and pretend you don't believe something. Something convinced you that a God is real. 
maybe it was the fact that you became sober after so many years of trying and that was a you know a real emotional moment for you and that convinced you that a god was real you can't just discard that on a whim yeah you just you and many talks with my brother convinced me that god was not real so i, I, I don't believe that, that. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I think you're lying. You're either lying okay. to us or you're lying to yourself because you can't do that. You can't just turn it off and pretend hey, that you don't believe. You know what, you know what, you know what, Jen? I, I acknowledge that, hey, maybe I self-sacrificed and self-sabotaged myself because I didn't feel strong without having a presence in my life. I don't know. I, I That is a possibility. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Because you I can stop so. going to church and, and going through the motions, but that yeah. doesn't really, I don't think it's really going to change your internal belief structure. I, I yeah, think it, that, yeah, and not only that, but I mean, if, if your church is a part of your social network and you cut yourself off from that, then you, you know from having been through you know, a recovery program that cutting yourself off from people that are helping you um, is actually going to jeopardize your sobriety. You know that. Yeah, I guess, okay, it could be that, I don't know. All I know is when I said the first prayer and I was thought into my life, the reason, the, the presence I felt, the reason I felt it was real is because it felt like, you, and I'm, I'm sure you've heard this description before, it felt like love and joy and, and happiness and peace was a tangible thing, and I was wrapped up in a blanket, and it was, there was a presence that was just there with me everywhere I went. I, I have no doubt that... Um, people's religious beliefs often come with some kind of emotional um, response, especially when they engage in um, rituals like prayer. You know, I, I have no doubt that that produces an emotional response in people. You probably get a serious endorphin rush, and you know, it feels good. I, I don't deny okay. that, that that happens to people. Okay, I just got one last question for you, and then, then I'll let you go and move on to other callers. Um, okay. I would like for you, if you could, please, explain to me the C.S. Lewis phenomenon. He started out as a devout atheist who set out on a mission to disprove God, to enlighten all humanity, and all he ended up doing is proving the existence of God to himself. Um, he came to see that I, all the evidence and research he did, he came to see that the only logical explanation is there must be a God. I don't know. How do you explain the Matt Dillahunty phenomenon? <laughs> he set out to prove that his God was real because he wanted to enter the ministry. Um, the more he studied, the more he realized that he couldn't uh, continue to believe um, that a God was real, and he had to reject his former beliefs. Oh, okay. and, oh sorry, one, one, one more thing. I just, cause I, I just thought, I thought that I had a li list of notes I wanted to ask you about. Um, I'm sure you're aware of what's widely accepted by the whole scientific community, including Stephen Hawkins, as the string theory, right? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I guess it's called the string theory. I'm not sure it's actually formally a theory, but yeah. Okay, yeah, and it's it's considered the most accurate theory that describes everything that's in existence and what's going on and all uh, again, that. Again, I'm not sure that that's actually a good description of it. I'm I'm not a physicist, so I don't. Yeah, I'm I'm not a, I'm not a cosmologist either. I can't, I can't either, speak so. to string theory with any kind of authority at all. Yeah. And, and frankly, okay, whatever well, it says, um, whatever, whatever point you want to make about string theory, I assure you it has nothing to do with why I'm an atheist. Actually, it does, because this is what I was trying to get to. I, I watched and studied and read a whole thing on string theory last night, and according to string theory, the seventh dimension, the seventh dimensional, uh, the seventh dimension of existence, the well, seventh dimensional existence and reality, and all the scientists agree on this, that it is a hyperbrain. Okay. You know, I'm not making that up. I, I, I understand. But you know what? I, I got three callers on the line here, so I'm, I'm going to actually cut you off. If you want to continue this, you can email us. Okay. All right. So thanks for the Bye. call, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Right. He read a whole thing on it last night. So. <laughs> um, okay. We should have gotten the, the title of that. but. Uh. Yeah. Well, maybe he'll email us and he'll give us the title of it. So, yeah. so we have 